Does anybody here like football? Any football fans? Uipest, Frodi fans, Man United fans? A few years ago, I wrote a book called Climate Change for Football Fans. It didn't sell very well. But it is still available on Amazon and Christmas is coming. Um, but it got me thinking about the relationship between football and climate change, and particularly football and taking action on climate change. One of the problems with climate change is that the motivation to take action on climate change is often not big enough to overcome all the reasons for not doing anything. I'm too busy, I've got to go and fetch the kids, I've got to make supper, and it's complicated and confusing and overwhelming, and shouldn't the politicians be doing it anyway? And what about like the Chinese? It's like, Loads of them. Um, so we become so overwhelmed by this enormous generality, we become paralyzed and do nothing. Now, football has got an amazing power for motivation. It gets grown men jumping and shouting and crying and hugging each other in the street. And then they'll drive for hours to places like Beekish Chobber or Huddersfield in the middle of winter and sit in the rain for two hours and watch the team that they love lose one nil. And it also has this amazing unifying power. Apart from the kind of healthy tribalism, it also brings people together. So if you watch Man United playing at Old Trafford and you look at the crowd, you've got Sikhs, and Jews, and Muslims, and black people, and white people, and women, and men. And they're all united in this common love. And it's so deep, that love. It comes from childhood, and it lives with you all your life, and it gets passed down generations. And it's, so, it's part of your identity. And there, there is its power. It's part of your identity. And football has enormous reach. It, it's loved by something like three and a half billion people on the planet. And if Barcelona Football Club were a country with its 500 million fans, it would be the third biggest country in the world. So we've put these two things together and created a business called Planet Super League. And we use the power of football to get people to take action on climate change. We're running our fifth tournament at the moment. It's called Cup 26 because it's connected with COP26. And we've got 49 clubs involved, Liverpool, Everton, Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea, right down to the National League in the UK where Chesterfield and Notts County are involved. And fans sign up to represent their club, and they score goals in weekly fixtures by completing up to 60, 70 different climate actions. Some are about reducing emissions, so switching to renewable energy supplier, going meat-free, uh, taking the bike instead of, instead of taking the car. And some activities are about kids getting into nature and learning about nature and discovering it. Because if children are close to nature as children, as adults, they will care more for it. And people love it. The families say, oh, we had a wonderful time in the summer doing all the Planet Super League activities. We finally spent time together. The kids got off the screens and went outside. And there are some very special moments. A little lad called Joseph, who's uh, disabled, yet he was one of the main scorers for Chesterfield when they won our spring tournament. And so he was invited to the stadium when Chesterfield were awarded the Planet Super League trophy. And he met his heroes, and he had a chance to kick the ball into the goal. And when Lucas Moura, the Brazil forward who plays for Spurs, rang up some of the Spurs families personally and congratulated them on doing really well in a Planet Super League tournament. So at the moment, 
we focus on families because the dynamics are so rich. You've got kids coming home from school. They've heard about climate change. Oh, mum and dad, what are you doing? And mum, she's making most of the decisions which affect household emissions. What to eat for supper, where to go on holiday, what clothing to, to wear, what shopping to do, electricity supplier often chosen by the mum. And dad, well, he's got to work out what to do with the kids at the weekend. And we've got 60 or 70 activities which are fun, relevant, and impactful. But now we've got to figure out how to scale it up. We want to be like great brands that become part of people's lives. So that green living becomes how we live. And we want to go from families with young children and then find out how to engage teenagers and students and young people embarking on their independent lives. And to have real impact, we have to go from 3,000 families to 3 million families or 300 million families. And that means going from the UK to other football-mad countries and going beyond that to American football and baseball and Indian Premier League and Kabaddi. Any sport where there are passionate fans who love their clubs. When people talk about climate action or dealing with climate change, it's almost always about some shiny new technology which is going to save us and hasn't yet been invented. Or about fiscal measures, making bad things more expensive or good things cheaper. But I don't kind of buy the solar-powered flying taxi story. I think we also need to make it about hearts and minds, about how we live our lives and what we are living our lives for. Now, we've managed to get football clubs already to see that the biggest impact they can have isn't changes they make in the stadium, but it's about engaging their thousands or millions or tens of millions of fans in climate action. And for fans, we want to help them move away from seeing climate change as something confusing or boring or difficult or overwhelming or guilty to something where they feel fantastic about having fun and doing very specific impactful actions together as a family and then engaging their children to help them live greener lives and have greener ambitions. Thank you.